Which of the following statements about the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia is true? A. Dysregulation of dopaminergic neurotransmission is caused by postsynaptic sensitivity. B. Dopamine release caused by amphetamine challenge is higher during remission. C. Higher amphetamine provoked dopamine release predicts worsening of psychotic symptoms. D. Overactivity of dopamine in the subcortical basal ganglia contributes to negative symptoms. E. There is a lower occupancy of D2 or D3 receptors in relapsed patients. The answer is C. According to the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia, higher amphetamine provoked dopamine release predicts worsening of psychotic symptoms. It has been suggested that the dysregulation of dopaminergic neurotransmission in schizophrenia is caused by presynaptic reactivity, not postsynaptic sensitivity. True statements about hypothesized neurobiological models of schizophrenia include a. Genes function in part by increasing vulnerability to environmental factors. b. Environmental factors increase risk by producing subtle brain damage. c. The apparent lack of gliosis in post-mortem studies implicates in utero factors. d. As the prefrontal cortex matures, behavioral and cognitive sequelae of subtle structural deficits become manifest. e. All of the above. The answer is e. Many genes are likely to be involved, and these may function in part by increasing vulnerability to the deleterious effects of environmental factors. Alterations in limbic and prefrontal functions then produce downstream, secondary alterations in subcortical dopamine, glutamate, and other neurotransmitter systems. With regard to the ventricular size in schizophrenia, which of the following statements is true? A. Patients with schizophrenia invariably demonstrate significant enlargement of the fourth ventricle only. b. Ventricular enlargement is a pathognomonic finding in schizophrenia. c. Ventricular changes in schizophrenia are likely to be specific for the pathophysiological processes underlying this disorder. d. All of the above. e. None of the above. The answer is E. Many schizophrenic patients have reduced cortical volume and lateral and third ventricle enlargement. These findings can be interpreted as consistent, with the presence of less than usual brain tissue in affected patients, whether that decrease is attributable to abnormal development, or degeneration remains undetermined. All of the following lead to an increased risk of schizophrenia except Having a deviant course of personality maturation and development. b. Having previously attempted suicide. c. Having a schizophrenic family member. d. Having a history of temporal lobe epilepsy. e. Having low levels of monomin oxidase, type b, in blood platelets. The answer is b. Having previously attempted suicide does not increase the risk for developing schizophrenia, although 50% of patients with schizophrenia attempt suicide once in their lifetimes. Other risk factors include having low levels of monomin oxidase, type B, in the blood platelets and having taken a variety of drugs. True statements about violence and schizophrenia include all of the following, except Violence in a hospital setting can result from undiagnosed neuroleptic-induced acute arcathesia. b. Patients with schizophrenia are more violent as a group than the general population. c. It is more difficult to prevent most schizophrenic homicides compared with the general population. d. Patients with disorganized schizophrenia are at much greater risk to commit violence than those with paranoid schizophrenia. E. Command hallucinations do not appear to play a particularly important role in violence. The answer is D. 
Patients with schizophrenia are more violent as a group than the general population. Violence in a hospital setting can result from undiagnosed neuroleptic-induced acute arcathesia. Persistently violent in patients should be moved to a more structured program and a less crowded environment. Which of the following statements best describes a characteristic of the epidemiology of schizophrenia? A. Female patients with schizophrenia are more likely to commit suicide than are male patients. B. In the Northern Hemisphere, schizophrenia occurs more often among people born from July to September than in those born in the other months. C. Reproduction rates among people with schizophrenia are typically higher than those among the general population. D. Patients with schizophrenia occupy about 50% of all hospital beds. E. Some regions of the world have an unusually high prevalence of schizophrenia. The answer is E. Schizophrenic patients occupy 50% of mental hospital beds, not of all hospital beds. In the Northern Hemisphere, schizophrenia occurs more often among people born from January to April, not from July to September. Reproduction rates among people with schizophrenia have been increasing in recent years. True statements about eye movement dysfunction in schizophrenia include A. Abnormal eye movements occur more often in patients with schizophrenia compared with control subjects. B. Eye movement dysfunction is associated with a frontal lobe pathology. C. Eye movement dysfunction is independent of drug treatment. D. Eye movement dysfunction is seen in first degree probands. E. All of the above. The answer is E. The inability to follow a moving visual target accurately, is the defining basis for the disorders of smooth visual pursuit, and disinhibition of saccadic eye movements seen in patients with schizophrenia. Eye movement dysfunction may be a tray marker for schizophrenia, it is independent of drug treatment and clinical state. In general, pooled studies show concordance rates for schizophrenia in monozygotic twins of 0.1% B. 5% C. 25% D. 40% E. 50% The answer is E. In general, pooled studies show concordance rates of about 50% in monozygotic twins. This is the most robust finding pointing to a genetic etiologic component to the disorder. A schizophrenic patient who states that he feels his brain burning is most likely experiencing a a senesthetic hallucination b delusional feeling c gustatory hallucination d haptic hallucination e Hypnopompic hallucination The answer is A. A person with schizophrenia often experiences a senesthetic hallucination, a sensation of an altered state in body organs without any special receptor apparatus to explain the sensation. Neither hallucinations nor delusions are pathognomonic of schizophrenia, they may occur in other disorders. A hypnopompic hallucination is a hallucination that occurs as one awakes. Childhood schizophrenia A. Tends to have a chronic course B. Tends to have a better prognosis than adult schizophrenia C. Is not diagnosed using the same symptoms as are used for adult schizophrenia D. Tends to have an abrupt onset E. All of the above The answer is A. Childhood schizophrenia is an early-onset form of schizophrenia, that resembles the typical case of dementia precox. Its onset is insidious and its course tends to be chronic, and its prognosis is mostly unfavorable. Neurobiological studies of children with schizophrenia, may provide clues into the developmental pathogenesis of adult schizophrenia.
Late onset schizophrenia. A. Is more common in men. B. Is associated with a preponderance of paranoid symptoms. C. Is clinically distinguishable from early onset schizophrenia. D. Results in poorer response to antipsychotic medications. E. Has an onset after age 60 years. The answer is B. Late onset schizophrenia is clinically indistinguishable from early onset schizophrenia but has an onset after age 45 years. This condition tends to appear more frequently in women and tends to be characterized by a predominance of paranoid symptoms. The prognosis is favorable, and these patients usually do well on antipsychotic medication. Which of the following is true of brain imaging technologies in the study of schizophrenia? A. Computed tomography, CT, is used more often than magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, in schizophrenia research because its resolution is superior to that of MRI. B. The abnormalities reported in CT studies of patients with schizophrenia are specific for the pathophysiological processes underlying the disease. C. In studies of monozygotic twins discordant for schizophrenia, MRI studies have shown that the cerebral ventricles in the affected twins are larger than in the non-affected twins. D. Positron emission tomography PET, studies have shown almost no impairment of brain areas after psychological test stimulation. E. Function magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, has shown no differences in the brains of patients with schizophrenia compared with control subjects. The answer is C. MRI studies show that in monozygotic twins who are discordant for schizophrenia, virtually all the affected twins have larger cerebral ventricles than their known affected twins. MRI is used in schizophrenia research, because its resolution is superior to that with computed tomography, CT. The majority of CT studies of patients with schizophrenia have reported Atrophy of the cerebellar vermis. B. Cortical atrophy in 10 to 35% of patients. C. Enlarged lateral and third ventricles in 10 to 50% of patients. D. Findings that are not artifacts of treatment. E. All of the above. The answer is E. The majority of CT studies of patients with schizophrenia have reported enlarged lateral and third ventricles in 10 to 50% of patients. Controlled studies have also revealed atrophy of the cerebellar vermis and decreased radiodensity of brain parenchyma. Those findings are not artifacts of treatment and are not progressive or reversible. Which of the following is not typically associated with catatonia? Mannerisms. B. Mutism. C. Stereotypes. D. Verbigration. E. Waxy flexibility. The answer is D. The catatonic type of schizophrenia has become rare in Europe and North America. Associated features include stereotypes, mannerisms, and waxy flexibility, or seria flexibilitas. Stereotypes are repetitive fixed patterns of voluntary physical action or speech. Mannerisms are ingrained, habitual involuntary movements. Persons in the United States who develop schizophrenia are more likely to a. have been born abroad b. have been born in the months from January to April c. have been born in the months from July to September D. Have been exposed to the para-influenza virus. E. None of the above. The answer is B. People who develop schizophrenia are more likely to have been born in the winter and early spring. There are no data to suggest that being born abroad is a risk factor for developing schizophrenia. Some studies show that the frequency of schizophrenia is increased after exposure to influenza, not para-influenza. 
Which of the following statements comparing the serotonin dopamine antagonists, SDAs, with dopamine receptor antagonists, DIAs, is true? A. The DIAs remain the first choice of treatment for schizophrenia. B. The SDAs affect both serotonin and glutamate receptors. C. The SDAs produce more extrapyramidal symptoms than the DIAs. D. The SDAs produce more neurological adverse effects than the DIAs. E. The SDAs are less effective than the DIAs for positive symptoms of schizophrenia. The answer is B. The serotonin dopamine antagonists, SDAs, affect both serotonin and glutamate receptors. They produce minimal or no extrapyramidal symptoms, and interact with different subtypes of dopamine receptors than do the standard antipsychotics. SDAs produce fewer neurological adverse effects, and are effective in treating negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Which of the following statements about the cause of negative symptoms in schizophrenia is false? A. Patients lose drive because circumstances eliminate them. B. Positive symptoms commonly cause allogia. C. Excessive doses of antipsychotic medications cause blunting of effect. D. Persecutory delusions can lead to social withdrawal. E. None of the above. The answer is E. People with schizophrenia may lose the capacity to experience drives, and social relationships and rewards simply because circumstances eliminate them. Treatment with antipsychotic medications can cause a phenocopy of primary negative symptoms, that can only be distinguished with a full history of illness or empirical trials of medication adjustment. Clozapin, Clauseral has been associated with few, if any, extrapyramidal side effects. B. Is believed to exert its therapeutic effect mainly by blocking dopamine receptors. C. Causes significant increases in prolactin levels. D. Is associated with a 10 to 20 percent incidence of agranulocytosis. E. Requires monthly monitoring of blood chemistry. The answer is A. Clozapin, clauseral, has been associated with few, if any, extrapyramidal side effects or tardive dyskinesia. It is appropriate in the treatment of patients with schizophrenia, who have not responded to first-line DIAs. Investigations into the cause of schizophrenia have revealed that a specific family pattern plays a causative role in the development of schizophrenia. b. The efficacy and potency of most antipsychotics correlate with their ability to act primarily as antagonists of the dopamine type 1, D1, receptor. c. A particular defective chromosomal site has been found in all schizophrenic patients. d. No significant abnormalities appear in the evoked potentials in schizophrenic patients. E. A monozygotic twin reared by adoptive parents has schizophrenia at the same rate as his or her twin raised by biological parents. The answer is E. Monozygotic twins have the highest concordance rate for schizophrenia. Adoptive twins who are reared by adoptive parents have schizophrenia at the same rate as their twin siblings raised by their biological parents. Epidemiological studies of schizophrenia have found all of the following except a. Hospital records suggest that the incidence of schizophrenia in the United States has remained unchanged for the past 100 years. b. The peak age of onset for schizophrenia is the same for men and women. C. Schizophrenia is equally prevalent among men and women. D. Approximately 50% of schizophrenic patients attempt suicide at least once in their lifetimes. E. The lifetime prevalence is usually between 1 and 1.5% of the population. The answer is B. T. 
typically, 1 to 1.5% of the population has schizophrenia at some point in their lifespan. A lifetime suicide attempt is made by almost half of all schizophrenic sufferers. In a 20-year follow-up, 10 to 15% of persons with schizophrenia commit suicide. Features weighing toward a good prognosis in schizophrenia include all of the following except a depression, b a family history of mood disorders, c paranoid features, d undifferentiated or disorganized features, e an undulating course. The answer is d. Poor prognostic features in schizophrenia include a family history of schizophrenia, and undifferentiated or disorganized features. Table 13.1, presents a summary of the factors used to assess prognosis in schizophrenia. MRI studies of patients with schizophrenia have found evidence for a increased cortical gray matter b Increased temporal cortex gray matter. C. Increased volume of the amygdala. D. Increased volume of basal ganglia nuclei. E. Increased volume of the hippocampus. The answer is D. Schizophrenic patients show decreased gray matter volume, decreased volume of limbic system structures, and increased volume of basal ganglia nuclei. These findings are consistent with the findings of neuropathological examinations of post-mortem tissue, including ultrastructural examination. Prefrontal cortex and limbic system hypotheses are the predominant neuroanatomical theories of schizophrenia because of the demonstration of a decreased volume of prefrontal gray or white matter, b disturbed prefrontal metabolism and blood flow, C. Disarray or abnormal migration of hippocampal neurons. D. Prefrontal cortical interneuron abnormalities. E. All of the above. The answer is E. Prefrontal cortex and limbic system hypotheses are the predominant neuroanatomical theories of schizophrenia. Studies demonstrating a relationship between hippocampal morphological abnormalities and disturbances in prefrontal cortex metabolism or function are particularly interesting to researchers studying the brain's structure, function and development. The rationale for the role of excess dopamine in schizophrenia is based on observations that a. Dopaminergic drugs can induce paranoid psychosis b. Drugs that block postsynaptic dopamine receptors reduce symptoms of schizophrenia. c. Metabolic alterations in limbic anatomy are consistent with a disturbance in dopamine metabolism. d. Increased concentrations of dopamine have been found in the amygdalas in post-mortem brains of schizophrenic patients. e. All of the above. The answer is e. The hyperdopaminergic hypothesis of schizophrenia arose from observations of drug action relating to the dopaminergic system. Drugs that increase dopamine system activity, such as diamphetamine, cocaine, levodopa, and methylphenidate can induce a paranoid psychosis. True statements about structural brain abnormalities in patients with schizophrenia include Abnormalities are present from birth. B. Abnormalities are present in a minority of patients. C. Abnormalities have not been correlated with cognitive deficits. D. Cortical involvement is multifocal rather than diffuse. E. None of the above. The answer is E. Structural abnormalities may be present in a majority of patients, although the exact percentage is unknown. These abnormalities are correlated to some degree, with clinical aspects of the illness, such as cognitive deficits. In simple deteriorative disorder, a. 
Delusions are common. B. Early diagnosis is common. C. Hallucinations are common. D. Homelessness is common. E. All of the above. The answer is D. DSM 4 TR diagnosis of simple deteriorative disorder, simple schizophrenia, is characterized by a gradual, insidious loss of drive, interest, ambition, and initiative. Patients withdraw from contact with other people, tend to stay in their rooms, avoid meeting or eating with other members of the family, stop working, and stop seeing friends. A 63-year-old man who was diagnosed with schizophrenia, in his mid-twenties and living off and on with family, neighbors, and in shelters since he first became ill, wanted to find some source of regular income. So he might escape the noise and threats of violence in the homeless shelters where he had been residing. He was advised to seek a disability pension, and was given detailed instructions on how and where to go and apply. At the next visit, and at subsequent visits, the patient made no progress toward a disability application, although he could acknowledge that he would feel safer getting out of the shelters. It was not until months later, when a social worker was available to accompany him to the office, that he was able to apply for benefits. The patient above is showing which negative symptom of schizophrenia. A. Allogia. B. A volition. C. Anhedonia. D. Blunting. E. Social inattentiveness. The answer is B. A volition is defined as a loss of will or drive. A volition is similar to apathy and may be considered closely related. Anhedonia is the loss of the ability to find pleasure from activities or relationships. Effective blunting is an important predictor of functional impairment in schizophrenia. A married man, aged 38 years old, with a history of dependable, conscientious work as a bookkeeper, became sleepless, anxious, and unable to concentrate three months prior. He developed the belief that his vision was failing, because of poison secretly placed in his food by former neighbors. He found a misprint in a newspaper that he believed was placed there by the editor to shame him publicly. Admitted to the psychiatric service of a general hospital, he said that cars passing up and down the street, contained agents who were spying on him. He believed that the electric light bulbs in his room were emanating a purifying radiation to counteract syphilitic germs, which he was supposedly breathing into the atmosphere. Although a physical examination was negative for syphilis. Which of the following psychiatric conditions is the most likely diagnosis? A. Brief psychotic disorder. B. Schizophrenia, paranoid type. C. Delusional disorder. D. Schizophrenia, disorganized type. E. Malingering. The answer is B. The presence of hallucinations or delusions is not necessary for a diagnosis of schizophrenia. To make the diagnosis, the patient must demonstrate the presence of two or more of the following, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior, or negative symptoms. Mr. G, a 36-year-old man, is admitted to a psychiatric unit, after being brought to the emergency department by police. As he was walking past a hotel in the central part of the city, he saw a man and woman standing on the sidewalk, about to take a photograph of a building across the street. Thinking that they were going to take his picture, he grabbed the camera, smashed it on the ground, and pulled out all the film. He explained his actions by saying the photograph would be used to control him, and that it is illegal to take another person's photograph. Mr. G has a history of multiple hospitalizations dating back to age 14 years. After being discharged, he begins drinking four to five beers a day, neglects getting prescriptions refilled, and stops medication when his supply runs out. He made two prior suicide attempts, both by hanging, 
in which he experienced no serious medical sequelae. He does not use illicit drugs. He lives alone, is estranged from his family, and has no friends. He also sees shapes, which he describes as colored letters dancing in front of his eyes. He is alert and oriented. He can recall three out of three objects after five minutes. His concentration is impaired. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis for the case described above? A. Delusional disorder. B. Schizophrenia, catatonic type. C. Schizophrenia, paranoid type. D. Schizophrenia, undifferentiated type. E. Schizoaffective disorder. The answer is D. Mr. G has a long-standing illness characterized by periods of hallucinations and delusions. He is socially isolated and not working. The most likely diagnosis is schizophrenia. Mr. G's attempt to not move superficially resembles catatonia, but his openly discussing with the examiner his reasons for remaining still is most uncharacteristic. Which of the following interventions is most likely to prevent relapse in the case above? A. Alcohol counseling. B. Increased socialization. C. Use of an atypical antipsychotic. D. Use of a long-term depot antipsychotic. E. Vocational rehabilitation. The answer is A. Alcohol counseling is of the greatest importance in giving Mr. G some stability and freedom, from an ongoing cycle of relapse and re-hospitalization. Vocational counseling and increased socialization may help, but only if his drinking is brought under control. It is probable that he would get an injection, start drinking, and not go for his next injection. A 32-year-old woman with a history of schizophrenia presents to clinic with her sister. The patient has been treated for the past three years with Risperidone, Risperdal. The patient's sister states she believes the patient's symptoms are well controlled, however, she is worried about unusual movements she noticed recently. She states that the patient has been protruding her tongue and making strange noises with her lips. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A. Arcathesia. B. Tardive dyskinesia. C. Parkinsonism. D. Dystonia. E. None of the above. The answer is B. Extrapyramidal symptoms may occur as a result of both typical and atypical antipsychotic treatment. Tardive dyskinesia typically appears between four months to four years after treatment is initiated. Parkinsonism classically results in bradykinesia, pill rolling tremors, and cogwheel rigidity. Directions Each group of questions below consists of lettered headings followed by a list of numbered phrases or statements. For each numbered phrase or statement, select the one lettered heading that is most associated with it. Each lettered heading may be selected once, more than once, or not at all. A. Paranoid schizophrenia. B. Catatonic schizophrenia. C. Residual schizophrenia. D. Disorganized schizophrenia. E. Undifferentiated schizophrenia. Inappropriate laughter. The answer is D. Disorganized schizophrenia. Mutism. The answer is B. Catatonic schizophrenia. Auditory hallucinations. The answer is A. Paranoid schizophrenia. Self-inflicted injury. The answer is B. Catatonic schizophrenia. No active symptoms. 
The answer is C. Residual schizophrenia. The DSM 4 TR classifies the subtypes of schizophrenia as paranoid, disorganized, catatonic, undifferentiated, and residual based predominantly on clinical presentation. Paranoid schizophrenia is characterized by the presence of one or more delusions and frequent auditory hallucinations. Disorganized schizophrenia has a marked regression to primitive, disinhibited, and unorganized behavior. Directions Each group of questions below consists of lettered headings followed by a list of numbered phrases or statements. For each numbered phrase or statement, select the one lettered heading that is most associated with it. Each lettered heading may be selected once, more than once, or not at all. A. Clang association. B. Echolalia. C. Loosening of associations. D. Neologism. E. Verbigration. Loss of logical relations between thoughts. The answer is C. Loosening of associations. Creation of a new expression or word. The answer is D. Neologism. Repetition of interviewer's words when answering a question. The answer is B. Echolalia. Words associated by sound rather than meaning. The answer is A. Clang association. Use of words in stereotypically repetitive fashion. The answer is E. Verbigration. Echolalia involves the repetition of the examiner's words. Verbigration involves the use of words in a stereotypically repetitive fashion. Thought blocking is the sudden and inexplicable blocking of thoughts, manifested by the patient's inability to speak. They act much like someone learning a new language who answers questions in strange language. Directions Each group of questions below consists of lettered headings followed by a list of numbered phrases or statements. For each numbered phrase or statement, select the one lettered heading that is most associated with it. Each lettered heading may be selected once, more than once, or not at all. A. Catatonic posturing. B. Echopraxia. C. Catatonic negativism. D. Catatonic stupor. E. Catalepsy. A patient remains with his hands behind his back, hours after restraints are removed. The answer is E. Catalepsy. A patient stands on one foot for five hours. The answer is A. Catatonic posturing. A patient sits unmoving in a recliner all day, until a nurse takes him to bed at night. The answer is D. Catatonic stupor. A patient resists attempts to move him from the fetal position. The answer is C. Catatonic negativism. A patient crosses his leg after the physician does. The answer is B. Echopraxia. Catatonia is a syndrome of psychometer disturbance, that is characterized by periods of physical rigidity, negativism, or stupor. Catatonic posturing involves patients holding odd, or exaggerated postures for prolonged periods. In catatonia, Catalepsy refers to waxy flexibility or flexibilitas, the tendency of patients to hold postures that are manipulated by others. Directions Each group of questions below consists of lettered headings followed by a list of numbered phrases or statements. 
For each numbered phrase or statement, select the one lettered heading that is most associated with it. Each lettered heading may be selected once, more than once, or not at all. A. Emil Krapelin. B. Eugen Bleuler. C. Kurt Schneider. More concerned with course and prognosis. The answer is A. Emil Krapelin. Divided symptoms into first and second rank symptoms. The answer is C. Kurt Schneider. More concerned with understanding the underlying psychological mechanisms. The answer is B. Eugen Bleuler. Created the original subtypes of schizophrenia. The answer is A. Emil Krapelin. Saw symptoms in a continuum with normal behavior. The answer is B. Eugen Bleuler. Eugen Bleuler first coined the term schizophrenia in 1911 and believed that the name denoted the splitting of psychotic functions, which he believed to be the basis of the illness. He saw symptoms of schizophrenia as a continuum with normal behavior. The four as, abnormal associations, autistic behavior and thinking, abnormal effect, and ambivalence. Directions Each group of questions below consists of lettered headings followed by a list of numbered phrases or statements. For each numbered phrase or statement, select the one lettered heading that is most associated with it. Each lettered heading may be selected once, more than once, or not at all. A. Vocational Rehabilitation B. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy C. Token Economy Program D. Social Skills Training E. Assertive Community Treatment Patient engages in role play with a trainer. The answer is D. Social skills training. A multidisciplinary team provides services 24 hours a day. The answer is E. Assertive community treatment. A variety of methods are used to help patients regain old skills. The answer is A. Vocational Rehabilitation Therapist gains a clear understanding of the patient's experience of hallucinations. The answer is B. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Promotes learning behavior to enhance patient's functioning. The answer is C. Token Economy Program Psychiatric patients can learn to build on their strengths when treatment is offered in a positive, creative, and systematic manner. Token Economies are behavioral reinforcement programs based on the principles of social learning. The overall goal is to promote learning of behaviors that will enhance each patient's functioning.